when I'm on set, it's like a feeling I can't even explain, honestly. It's like a mixture of emotions, a mixture of being nervous about it at the same time, but excited because you're trying to create something that you envision in your mind and bring it to life. It's just unreal sometimes. I didn't have everything. Every photo shoot could be completely unpredictable. I mean, it's not something you could just pre-analyze and prepare yourself for. It's something that more like you have to actually be there to feel the emotions and the vibes of the people, the energy, and you just gotta be willing and being able to adapt to whatever's thrown at you and make the best out of it and capture these moments that will never be lived again. My name is David Diaz, I'm 30 years old, and I live in Boyle Heights in Los Angeles, California. I'm a professional photographer and videographer, and I'm also a full-time father to the most amazing son I have ever met in my life. I remember being in the delivery room the day he was born. I had my camera phone on my hand, and I was anticipating whether I was going to be a father to a boy or a girl. And that same day, at about 4.09 p.m., my best friend was born. David Jacob Diaz III. I made it a point to practice my photography and take pictures of my son every month with a different theme and capture every special moment we share together and pretty much capture every special moment he had whether it was good or bad so when he grows up he can look back and see what his childhood was like while, while he was growing up now everybody to the propaganda. My son is three years old now. It amazes me how time flies by so fast. It seems as though it was just yesterday. I had my son on my arms and I was putting him to sleep. But now my baby has grown into this amazing three year old kid who has just so much energy and joy and such an amazing character. It's unreal. And I can honestly say he is my motivation and he's who inspired me into pursuing my dream in photography and videography. He is who made me who I am today. Wait a second, I think I forgot to mention a big major part of this whole video. I think I forgot to mention the part of how I got into photography and videography in the first place. Walk up to a better storm. I was pretty much one of those kids that carried my camera with me no matter where I was at. It was one of those disposable cameras you could only use one time and you didn't really get to see what you shot until you actually took the film to get developed. I remember just taking pictures through all high school and just of random things, the hallways and a few of my friends and I would ask one of my friends to take a picture of me with my friends or teachers and when I took the film to get developed I was like dude you suck as a photographer. 
I remember when I first got my official real camera, I had to beg my mom to get it for me on a little way. I didn't really get involved into filmmaking until I was a senior in high school and I needed to pick an elective to graduate. And just happens the only class that was open was a film class. This filmmaking class was taught by a teacher by the name of Miss Boyle. Let's just say me and her really didn't get along. Because we had prior history, I took her English class and pretty much I was one of the class clowns. <laughs> I remember showing her to class and she's like, no, get out of here, like, go. And I went back to my counselor and my counselor was like, oh, well, if it's either that or you take another class in the summer and you, and you don't graduate on stage. I pretty much had to go back and convince her to let me be in her film class. Finally, I, I did and she, I remember she told me, David, you get one chance. If you screw it up, you're out of here. And of course, that, that chance turned into like a hundred and... After film class, me and Ms. Boyle had a complete different relationship. Um, we actually became real close and she saw something in me that I didn't at the time or I didn't think I was capable of and most importantly um, she believed in me when, when no one else did and it was a blessing and to this day I call her the same boil. <laughs> After completing high school, I was fortunate enough to get a full scholarship to a program called Inner City Filmmakers. Since uh, 1993, Inner City Filmmakers has provided low-income and minority youth with free year-round, high-quality, hands-on, technical, creative, and business skills training. It's pretty much an intense eight-week summer program where you get to learn every aspect of film and how to make a movie, um, and you get taught by working professionals in the, in the film industry. Next thing you know, you're taking classes from the screenwriting, to producing, to casting, to production, uh, camera work, uh, directing, all the way to post where you're editing. I must admit, there's one thing I've really 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 engraved in my head and I learned from inner city filmmakers besides professionalism and that thing is to be self-motivated and to be hungry for whatever it is no matter what your goal is never stop keep going at it because if you snooze you lose at the end of the day it's who gets to cross that finish line because it all comes down to who's hungrier for it and who's willing to go the extra mile Next thing you know, I graduated the program and they helped me get a job and I started off as a police officer. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I started off working as a PA for a couple independent films and commercials and met a couple amazing producers and uh, I learned a lot of stuff from them. Next thing you know, I blinked my eyes and I'm on set with Russell Carpenter. I mean, it couldn't get any bigger than that. I mean, he won an Academy Award for Best Cinematographer while working on Titanic. We were working on The Ugly Two at the time with uh, Catherine Heigl and Gerard Butler. I actually had the honor of not only meeting but actually interviewing Will Smith for the Jeffoni Film Festival, which is a gig I got through um, producer Stephen Paul and his wife, uh, Jamie Natella, which is amazing by the way. Um, I actually got a chance to work on a couple of the projects. I do gotta give a special thanks to one person, and that person is Sal Alvarez. He is the reason for half the gigs I had because he's the one that brought me on set with them. It just so happens that he knew the same teacher that I had, Miss Boyle. If it wasn't for him, half the shoots I worked on, I mean, would have never been possible, and I thank him for that. <laughs> 